the accounting equation. With the accounting equation, you have to have this memorized for this course. And this is the bare bones of the accounting equation. So when you get into the homework, and we, when we'll see this when we get down to the optional practice here in a little while, this is the, uh, the bare bones of the, of the equation. Everything's gonna fall into one of these three categories in a sense, and you'll see what I mean by that in a second. But, and, and this is just what it seems. It's an equation, meaning that th this side over here, the assets has to equal this side over here. So liabilities plus owner's equity. So just to do some real easy numbers, if I had 10 over here in the assets, and that means the liabilities, if the liabilities were, if I had $10 of assets, let's say cash, and I had $3 that I owed somebody, that's liabilities, then that means this number over here, because of the plus sign, this number has to be seven. Because seven plus three it has to equal in accounting, the equation has to always balance. Owner's equity is what I have invested still in the business, and that can come in different forms. It can come in through what I've actually put in into the business. Say I've, you got to start out with some money to start up a business, so it could be money that I put in from my own personal account into the business's account. But it could also be, and this is where the equation expands, it could also come from one of these two items revenue and expenses. And you'll see that's what I have here in my, I have the little like dot, 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 because this is, yeah, this is the fundamental equation, the bare bones. And then these guys are kind of an extension of that fundamental equation. They still work in it. And why you think, well, how can it be there sometimes and not sometimes? That's a good question. What it means is these guys eventually, these two accounts, the revenue and expenses, what they ultimately do is they fall into the owner's equity. So revenues and expenses ultimately can come down here into owner's equity and they're gonna look, they're gonna look the same as they do out here. But for when we get into doing real accounting, and doing some transactions, it's easiest to see the entire equation laid out like this. Just know that revenue and expenses for now in this first week, when you do chapter one, they actually will show up here in owner's equity. And then from chapter two on, we'll really be expanding the equation into all five of what I call, these are called the parent accounts the assets, the liabilities, owner's equity, revenue and expenses. They're the parent accounts. And they're parent accounts because they have accounts below them. They're, they're regular accounts. <clears throat> so cash, we'll, we'll start with the assets. Cash, and I'm gonna pull up, if you look at the lecture notes, one of the next things I have down here is to briefly explain and we'll go through these other items probably when we get to chapter two. But let's first just briefly look at what each of these parent accounts mean. And this will help if you can begin to understand these, it'll help you, um, especially as we get into chapter two and beyond. So assets are things that we own as the company or we have the right to own it. These are my, um, interpretations of the exact definitions. These aren't necessarily the exact definitions. These are what I think will help you best to understand them instead of some long drawn out uh, sentence. So things that the company owns, definitely when you have your cash, that's something that you own. Or when you when we get down a little further, cash, you can see how long this one is. That's because there's a lot of transactions that involve cash. And we'll get into that in chapter two. But um, one of the items here, I have this abbreviated. You may want to spell it out for a little bit of time, but you'll get to the point probably where you'll abbreviate it too. 
is AR, which stands for accounts receivable. And you can have an accounts receivable for all the different companies that you do business with. And accounts receivable, what that means is somebody owes you money. And then I have company one. So, and you're gonna have, you can have an account receivable for each company that owes you money. So I could have account 110 that just separates out and it says, okay, Julie's company, I do business with Julie and she owes me $100. So I wanna keep track of that. I wanna keep track that Julie owes me money. And then I might have account 111 for Bob. Bob's auto store owes me $350 for doing their accounting work. And I wanna keep track of Bob down here. I'm gonna have a separate account and I'm gonna make room for Bob for account 111. And I can do that for all the different people that owe me money. So that's something that I have the rights to own. I have the rights to that cash that that company owes me. And then as you're looking at your, <clears throat> this T account sheet, you'll notice that my little red lines separating them, there's a lot more assets that are common than there are necessarily liabilities. There are a lot of liabilities, but they're not necessarily the most common ones that we're gonna use a lot in this class. So when I draw this red line and bring it over, the rest of this down here are still assets, even though they're kind of underneath the liabilities. But just so it was printable on a, on a page, that's why I did that. So these items here are still things that I own or have the rights to own. If I sell stuff in my business, invent, that's what it's called, inventory. Let's say I'm a car mechanic or I'm in an auto repair st uh, store and I sell oil for the car or um, uh, whatever, whatever it could be, it could be air filters. I'm gonna put my inventory over here. It's, I own it until somebody buys it. These, the supplies, these are things that I'm gonna use in my business. Not things that are for sale, but things like computer ink. If I buy it, I need to keep track of it that I have it. And then once I use it, I can put it over into the an expense account that we'll see. And then when we get down here to account 140 and beyond, these are our long-term assets. And these guys we're gonna have for a long time or we expect to for at least a year or more. Everything above this, we expect things to change. But everything below, we expect to have it for at least a year, if not maybe five or 10 years or more. So those are an example of assets. We can definitely add in more assets as we get them. But those are some of the most common assets that you're gonna find. And you'll, so when I have equipment, um, account 140 and then equipment, Number two, you can have 10 pieces of equipment. But for accounting purposes, what a lot some companies will want to do is keep their equipment separate. And that's for depreciation reasons. And also simply to know what you have. That's another reason. But we'll talk about the depreciation once we get into next week. And that's what these accounts are going to deal with. But we're not going to worry about those right now. Just know that we could have just like account receivable, I could have account 144, equipment number three, and all, and keep going for as, however many pieces of equipment I have. And these are usually big things, things that uh, have a cost, a, a significant cost. Now, our next section of the equation, the liabilities, probably about what it sounds, it's what the company owes most of the time, it's what the company owes in money. But there are a couple equations, a couple times when the, where the company owes a service. And we'll see that when we get into week two as well. But the primary ones here, AP is just the opposite of the AR over here, the account receivable. So in the assets, the account receivable, think of it as receiving. I'm going to be receiving money. Here, it's accounts payable. I'm sorry. Uh, did you have a... 
I need to stop real quick and make sure there's no questions. Is there any questions? No? Okay. All right, let's get, get back. Uh, the accounts payable, think of it as you have to pay somebody money. And so it's just like when somebody owes you money. Um, this is just the opposite then. Somebody's done, did something for you perhaps, or maybe sold you something and you just haven't paid them yet. The accounts payable shows that you need to pay them. And how much? These are usually short-term items, things you're gonna pay off fairly quickly, probably even without in any interest. This account is um, to show how much we owe our workers. When our workers do work, but we haven't paid them yet, this shows that I owe them money. And then this one here, unearned revenue, this is the one we're gonna talk about where it's not actually money that I owe. This is uh, a service that I owe. And think of this as like cards. Gift cards are a real common example of unearned revenue. It's where, think of it as if, if your company is Texas Roadhouse, people come in and pay 50 bucks for a gift card. Well, Texas Roadhouse hasn't really done anything for that money, except giving you a little piece of plastic. They don't, they don't get to count that as revenue until they've actually provided you the service that you paid for. And then down here below the liabilities, I have a couple others that are a little bit, depends on your business, but these may be a little bit less common. This one, if you, this one would be really common if you sell stuff in your business instead of service. If you actually sell goods, then this is gonna be really, really common because you're always collecting sales tax and sales tax isn't your money, it's the IRS's money. So that's why we have to count it as a liability because it's not ours and we keep track of what we owe. And then down here, finally, notes payable. These are things that if I owe something pretty big, like let's say I buy a vehicle for my business and I'm gonna pay it off over three years or five years, then that's where this would go, that big dollar amount that's not due right away. That's considered a note payable. All right, let's move to the third category, the three out of five. We're gonna go through all five. Even though for this first class session, it's really only gonna look at when it does the, um, the equation, it's only going to look at the first three, but I think it's important to do all five. Owner's equity, so this is what the owner has uh, the rights to in the business. So this is not only if the owner has put stuff into the business, whether it be money or actual equipment that they have donated to the business for the time being. Um, it's also any money that they have earned over time and that they have accumulated and not paid out to, to pay for wages or uh, any other bills that they have. It's money that they have, they brought in more than they've paid out. It's the excess. So in owner's equity, the three main accounts that we have that we're gonna be dealing with, the first one is called capital or common stock. It just depends on the book that's being used uh, and sometimes even within the book, they may uh, flop terms depending on the business. If it's a like a sole proprietor, it's your own personal business. A lot of times it's called capital. If it's a bigger business and they have, um, they sell stock, they're like a corporation, then it's called common stock. They mean the same thing. It's just the titles are different, but this is if, if a company has put money away, if the owner has put money into the business themselves or the equipment into the business, this is where it, you keep track of how much did Bob put into the business and how much did, if, if you have multiple owners, there's gonna be one down here for Larry and one for Sue. But if there's only one owner, then you keep track of how much did Bob put into the business and different, whatever he put in. And then this one is whenever Bob takes money out of the business. When you take money out of the business, if it's, a, if it's a small little company, it's usually called a drawings. 
if it's a big corporation, you call it dividends. So when companies, when you, I'm, you probably have heard of companies paying out dividends, that's paying out money to the owners. And whenever money is paid out, then it comes over here into its own T account. And then finally, I had said everything after owner's equity, everything in the, in the uh, dot, dot, dot over here, goes into owner's equity at the when it's all said and done at the end of the year well where it goes is into retained earnings retained earnings is the summary of everything that the business has earned over what it's paid out so if you earn 10 bucks this year and you only paid out eight then you your business profited two bucks that $2 is gonna come down here into retained earnings. And how much money have you uh, accumulated? But again, we, we only put it down there usually at the either the end of the month or the end of the year, depending on when your closing periods are. I know this sounds like a lot, and it, I just wanna introduce these topics. That's all we're doing right now. So you can begin, when you're doing the homework, you can begin to put a name and definition with it. It's a lot to understand. That's why we're gonna go through it slow these first couple um, class sessions. Okay, so now the revenue. It's part of the owner's equity. It's kind of like an offset, a subset. But the revenue, gotta come down here to our definition. You can have different types of revenue. You can have where you're a service business, like an accountant or a lawyer a doctor's office, or you can have sales revenue. If you're a um, supply type store and you sell stuff like uh, maybe Target or a shoe store, they're gonna, it's the same type of revenue. It's just, how are you doing it? Are you selling goods or are you selling service? And there are even other types of revenue like interest revenue if you're a bank. They make money, but it's not one of these two necessarily, it's by earning interest. But anyway, you can only count revenue in your business if you've done and had these two things um, complete. These are the two requirements that the accounting rules, GAAP is the uh, acronym for the accounting rules. It stands for Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. Basically, that's the guideline to uh, how you do things in accounting. It's kind of like the rule book for a sports team. But to, to count something as revenue, you have to have these two things done. You have to, um, the company has to have either paid you or like we remember we had over here in the uh, T accounts, just below being paid, just below cash, the accounts receivable. So the companies had to pay you or have a promise to be paid. What that means is you, your business can't go out and just do work for somebody and count that as revenue. They never agreed to it. So they're probably not gonna pay you if you do something, even though it may benefit them. So you gotta have a promise to be paid. You just can't go do something. I can't go shovel your snow, your driveway and then expect to be paid if you never even ask them to. And then the second, assuming this one's been met, you actually have to have the job completed or nearly complete. That's one of the little caveats. It can be almost complete and it's still, you can still count it. And what this is, is like the gift card example. You can't, Texas Roadhouse can't count that $50 that you paid for a gift card as revenue right away because they haven't done the service for you or whoever you're gonna give the gift card to. So once they have actually provided you their food, then they can count it as a revenue. But before then, remember they're gonna come over here as a liability. They're gonna show that 50 bucks as, well, it's almost revenue, but not quite. We can't count it as real good revenue. Like this is where you ultimately want you want that 50 bucks to end up over here as your, as your actual revenue account. But we can't put it here until we actually deliver the food. 
we have to put it over in the unearned until we actually uh, deliver the food. All right, now our last one. Now, as we look at the equation, these were our primary, our basic equation. And then we added in with a plus our revenue. We're making money, getting more money in. But when we spend money, we subtract. We subtract in our equation. This is the only time that there's a minus sign. And we subtract any time that we spend money for normal business needs. And those are what our expenses. Now these expenses, they have to meet two criteria. And again, these, anytime you see these criteria, these are my definitions. These are what I think help students to really grasp the material. So this may not be the absolute most beautiful definition that you've ever seen, but I think it's ones that can, you can really understand the best. So for something to be an expense, the business would have had to got the benefit of something and it could be lots of different things. It could be that the employees worked for them. And when employees work for them, you get the benefit of the employee's work, their skill, their labor, whatever it is. And we call that wages. Or somebody could have provided advertising for you, like on a billboard. You paid them money and they put up a billboard for you. That you got the benefit of that. Um, if, you, if you don't own your business, uh, the building, then you probably are gonna pay rent for your location. You're getting the benefit of that somebody's building. And there can be lots of different expenses. Going back to our T account sheet, we'll come back to this one once we get to uh, week three. This cost of goods sold. So we'll get back to it. But for now, um, these are just a few of the items, some of them I've already talked about. The advertising, the rent, wages, We'll get to depreciation um, next week in week two. And then you'll see I have some blank ones. And these are just to fill in with whatever the business has as an expense. There can be lots of expenses in the business. Just the ones that I have here are some of the most common. But other ones that would go in here would be utilities expense. I don't have that one on here. Um, a few, there's some other ones as well. But the main items, uh, the main criteria for something to be an expense is that the company is A, receiving the benefit now. So remember up here, we had two criteria for an expense. We have to have two criteria met too. We're receiving the benefit now, like advertising. We pay for advertising and somebody's put up the billboard. And we're gonna be receiving it for less than a year. We only have this benefit right now for the next month or two at most for the year. And what that means is if I go and buy something long-term like a vehicle, then I don't put it as an expense. That's where I go back and put it as my equipment because I'm going to have it for a long time. So it goes over here as something I own and going to use a lot. These are items that I'm going to get the benefit of but only for just a little bit of time. Okay, with that, let's take about a five minute break and we'll come back here at, uh, let's go at um, 10 after. And then we'll start in on doing some of the financial statements that uh, this first chapter looks at. So let's come back in in about five minutes.